All right, well, have a seat. How many of you guys think you could go to Orlando next year on the next trip? Yeah? Si? Ah, si se puede. You can do it. Absolutely. We have such a great time and the company takes such great care of you. Now some of you, some of you um, would like to go and qualify just to go on the trip. See? Really? Some of you would qualify just, forget the trip, you just want the check. Right? How many think that might change your holiday season? My dad always made a big deal of, around Christmas. He liked to buy things for his family, his kids, but his family and extended family and parents and in-laws. And uh, my dad is one of five people, five children. My mom is one of 16 children. So, you know, um, and my dad has taken care of, my parents have helped them all at some time along the line. And it's nice to be able to buy cars for them or help them out. Some of them he's bought homes for. How many, how many think that might improve the relationships you have with your family? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, what you got to do between now and next time is you got to focus on what you got to do daily to get there. You know, and that's part of the story. One of the things that I heard uh, Rich DeVos talk about many times over the years and, and one of the more recent times that I heard him speak is he said all that he and Jay did was they went to work every day. You know, and that's all my parents did. They were consistent. They worked this business consistently. Um, and even when they had the freedom not to, making more money than they could have ever imagined, they set the example for the people that were coming up, including their children. And I appreciate the example that they gave us. I appreciate the principles that they taught through their example and, and lived. We all have to learn them, live them, and then give them. Learn them, live them, and give them. This is a business that only works when you give it away. And you're rewarded. The more people that you help, the more people you create success in their lives, the obvious more success you get in your life. So what I saw in my parents is they took their eyes off of themselves. My dad always said, I'm in this business to get what I want for me and my family and to help you get what you want. And that's the only way that it works. But I appreciate when they had what they wanted, all of the things and more they could have ever imagined, oh. they kept going. And you know what's great about this business is that the further you go, the further you can see. And then the further you can see, the further you can go. It's like cyclical. And um, to see the impact that they've made in so many people's lives, I, I grew up being very proud of what my parents did. Not that everybody understood it on yeah, the outside, yeah. right? Sometimes people are not going to understand what you're doing. And more, more probably than anything else, they won't understand why. If they don't know why, it's kind of strange. But people really don't understand what you have a hold of. Some people see it, some people don't. It's kind of like somebody told a story, one of the diamonds, about a rabbit and a dog chasing a rabbit. Dogs love to chase things. Dogs love to chase rabbit. Now, it's interesting to watch a dog chase a rabbit. But think about this, this example. Think if now you saw a dog chasing a rabbit, but now no longer could you see the rabbit. That dog would look pretty strange, right? Sometimes that's how people will look at you because they see what you're doing. It may seem crazy if they don't know what you're going for. You know, and, and so sometimes what we do looks pretty strange to somebody on the outside that doesn't understand what we have a hold of. But you know, a, a dog chasing that rabbit, he's not thinking about anything else. He's thinking about the greatest challenge that he has. He can't back down from a challenge, right? And, and realize this, when you're focused on that rabbit, you don't think about anything else. You don't think about the weather. But I see the people in this business that get on with life and chase that rabbit, they're not the people that are complaining, oh, I'm working hard. They're enjoying the chase, they're enjoying the pursuit. They're not paying attention to the small details that everybody else seems to be occupied with. 
It's kind of like, I don't know if you've heard the story that a dog in the hunt doesn't know he has fleas. He doesn't know. He's, he's not focused on that. And that's the way we got to be. Not get distracted about all the little things that don't mean things long term. My parents had, because they invested in people's lives, they ex have experienced tremendous success. And, um, and that's been a great thing to, to watch and experience and be a part of. And, um, but they weren't focused on the, the, the daily distractions that most people do are. They had their focus on a bigger vision and about people and, and where we could go. Not where we were or where we came from, but where we could go. It's amazing what this room could do if only enough people cared enough. Great teams prosper and succeed when enough people on the team care enough about success. And realize, if you're in the hunt now, that in the middle, realize that in the middle of success, everything looks like a failure. Not too long ago, I was remodeling a, a, lake, a cabin on the lake. And things were all over the place. Doors were removed. There was plastic covering the door to the outside. It was cold inside. I mean, the place was mess. Dirt on the floor. Oh, it's yeah. not the only place you'd want to live. And my dad would talk about this when I was growing up. We were always had a, he always had a project going on the side, a building project. And because he loved to watch progress happen okay. in people's lives, physically around him. He loved to see progress happening. And um, so he learned those principles that sometimes my mom or us kids would be very inconvenienced by the mess going on around us. In that example of remodeling the house, adding a garage, tearing out the walls and redesigning. You guys are getting ready to move, aren't you? Into a brand new house. That's a mess, <laughs> right? Uh, Things are going to be messy for a while. What I learned from my parents is that in the middle of success, everything looks like a mess. So realize that, that things aren't going to go perfectly. You're not going to go platinum or break platinum exactly when you expect it. You can't control everything. You have to build it on faith. But when things are messy, realize that's a good thing. Right? And, and when, think, when they, my mom could not keep up with doing things of her responsibilities in the business and with the family or church and school, my dad taught her to just relax. It's going to be okay. Focus on where we're going and it's going to be a lot better. Be patient with success. Be patient with yourself. Not too patient. Some people are way too patient with themselves. The secret is to be persistent and patient. And um, not to beat yourself up, but to be your greatest encourager and your spouse's greatest encourager and your children's greatest encourager. Yeah. We all grow with encouragement, not criticism, but encouragement. And so realize that um, when you're going through things, things can be messy. My mom would say, speaking to leaders sometimes, when you're going through what seems like hell, the key is don't stop. <laughs> you don't want to stay there. When you're going through hell, keep going. Some people stop. You know, it is a phenomenal business that we are part of. I'm so impressed with the founders, the real people with real integrity, with real principles. They inspired my parents. They inspire me. We have the best business of its kind, bar none, on the planet. In fact, we don't have any competition. Somebody talked to me Friday, and they approached me. They didn't know me through the business. They know me because I bought a house from them. And they approached me with another business. And they said it's kind of like the Amway business. But they, but they had some different twist that they put on it that, that basically said, but it's better. Now, that's kind of laughable. I kind of had to smile, yeah. but I was respectful. And, um, and you know, and the, the company they were talking about, it doesn't really matter. We don't really have competition. The next, we're number one in our industry. Not two, not three. In fact, if you looked at the company, second company and third company and fourth company, and you put them all together, 
they still wouldn't equal what we do. Now, I don't, I don't know if any of you follow racing, but I live in NASCAR country. And I was thinking about it because this guy approached me on Friday, you know, when there's all this hype. This was the big, last big NASCAR race of the season. Somebody close to our family that we know dates the number one driver there. Now, the person who won the race today is a guy named Jimmy Johnson. Now, you may not know that name, you may know that name, it doesn't really matter. But he's won it now five years in a row, and nobody else in racing has ever done that before. Mm -hmm. Now, him talking to me about another business, the fellow that talked to me the other day, it's kind of like me going and talking to Jimmy tomorrow, and kind of saying, hey, Jimmy, you don't know me, but my name's Steve Yeager. I know you race. Well, listen... I've got a garage behind my house, and I'm working to put a car together. I've got all the parts back there, I think. Would you come race for me? What do you think Jimmy would say? <laughs> he's, got the most, he's the most successful in the industry, the most track record, has the best team and system to create that. Well, just realize you've got what I've got. It really is ridiculous. Now, I don't down talk any other company. That's not what I do, but I don't pay attention, and I know we have the best without any doubt in question. In fact, if you just... <laughs> the positive word on the street with our business, with the advertising we're doing, they're just announcing brand new sponsorship now of other major uh, teams, sports oh, yeah. teams. New athletes, new oh, celebrities, that? the advertising in the paper that's constantly there in magazines, on television. And they're going to have a brand new ad campaign next year that is going to be even better, more of a powerhouse than we've had the last couple of years. They've made the best of class products that we have, exclusive, the top rated products. And then they go last year and they lower the pricing on everything. Now you get the best for less, competitive to where you can buy it at any store. 400 exclusive products, 700 patents. The management the company has right now is the best I've seen in decades. The incentive trips, they're, they're announcing a brand new incentive trip next week at Achievers. Diamond Club is unbelievable. They have an executive Diamond Club, but now they have a, um, a um, Amway North America Growth Council trip to go to take leaders, Diamonds, um, Typically, Founders Diamonds or EDC is the way that it works out to qualifiers to take them on exotic trips around the world. Like, um, the first one will be in a Mediterranean cruise. And so, it just keeps getting better. And the incentives, the company is listening to us better than ever time I can, any time I can think of in history. They're listening to our suggestions and making it even better. It's all about creating success and confidence with the new people to increase their belief and to duplicate it. I tell you what, we're getting so streamlined, I'm just, I'm blown away about what the, the impact of many of these things are going to be over the next year, two, and five years. I talked about a spiral. It's one thing to recognize that and realize that we're all on a spiral. And it's another, it's a, another good thing, a step in the journey to recognize it's better to be going up than going down. And to go up means we have to do things that we may not be comfortable with or pay a price or show up at a seminar today or drive the miles. This is a book called The Success System That Never Failed. This is um, a book that Dexter's talked about for 30, 40 years that one of his top five books that changed his thinking that helped form the system that he put together. And uh, just looking for the date, it was like this book is like 50, 40, 50, 60 years old. But here's what it says in the first preface of the book. It says here, everybody wants something, no matter what it is. Money, position, prestige, some special achievement, the opportunity to be of service to our fellow man, love, appreciation, respect. Some, we could go on and on. Some kind of fulfillment that would define success for us. To be happy, to be healthy, to be wealthy, and to experience life's true riches. These are universal desires. These are the inner urges that inspire us to take action. 
Do you know what yours are? Or do you, are they clearly defined? Maybe you want to be part of this leadership team that was up on stage here. Maybe you want the respect and admiration of your wife or your children. Maybe you want the um, support from your husband. Maybe you want somebody in your life that could take care of all the hassles and inconveniences that you have to deal with in life. But everybody wants something. And what I've found is this vehicle is the best vehicle for helping people accomplish what most people want, whatever that is, out of life. And I hope by being here this afternoon and this evening that I, you know, relate to you, I connect, maybe inspire you, but mostly I want to challenge you to identify your dream, to begin to create your life vision. The sooner you do that, the sooner you can start on that journey to change your level of thinking. Albert Einstein, very smart guy, much smarter than me, he said we cannot face a significant, we cannot solve the significant problems we face in life at the same level of thinking that we were at when we got into the problem. We got to raise our thinking, our belief, our dreams, our vision, your attitude, obviously your effort. But you start with those things, the, the effort will automatically come when you get your dream up there, right? I want to be, get you thinking about the next 30 and 60 days to create some success in your business in the next 30 and 60 days. Well, I am a product of the system. I am a, you know, I didn't get a traditional education. I didn't go to college. The truth is I didn't go to high school. Now I got you thinking. Now I'm not recommending that for anybody, but I want to just tell you that's part of my story. Because we, we took, after a certain number of grades, we took homeschooling so we could travel with my parents. That was their dream for the lifestyle to have their children with them. Well, we realized we were learning so much through this system and the team that it far surpassed what anything we were learning at school. That was kind of like a slow-paced, I'm not down on traditional education. If you want to have a job, it's a good place to go. And a lot of people, we need a lot of people with jobs. There's not that many available right now. Maybe the most charitable thing you could do is to build this business so you could give your job to somebody else who needs it's one. I think that's a nice thing. That's a, being a capitalist. But I didn't want that for my life. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to control my day, control my future. I didn't want to work for a paycheck every week. Right? I didn't want to work for by the hour. I wanted, didn't want to get paid wholesale and then have to go out in the world and buy everything retail. It's hard to make those numbers work when you get paid at wholesale and you have to go in the world and buy everything at retail. But my parents, they got started in the business before I was born. And, um, and they were just about to go ruby. Um, they went ruby after, right after I was born. They went through three years of real struggle in their business not having success. They didn't have a system. They didn't have an upline mentor. They found out over time, looking back on it, they were doing a lot of things wrong, but they didn't know. They were listening to the wrong people. They were doing the wrong things. But they didn't know any different. And so all that they knew, um, everything that they'd been taught is all that they knew. But what they didn't know, what was there is a lot more to know than what they were taught. You may relate to that. I'll make the story, kind of shorten it up. They got in. Um, they reached their initial goals. They got rich. They went crown ambassador. And they're going to renew again. <laughs> That's a real short version. Um, but it was so. What I value most about the experience growing up in the business and watching all this happen right before my eyes is the association with people like you and the access to information that you are not getting out there in the real in the traditional world. This alternative education we have, the principles and values we weren't getting out there in the world, to be responsible to be the best person you can be not focused on blaming somebody else in the world for who they're not to be honest and being honest you can still be successful in the world
to be, have business ethics, to do the right thing when it's not easy.